Some wealthy societies face greater health and social challenges than others. More crime, more violence, more obesity. Why is this? And how is it connected to global sustainability? To find out, we asked Professor Richard Wilkinson, co-author of The Spirit Level. I do think that human welfare and well-being depends very much on us understanding how fundamentally social we are as human beings. Economists have talked rather as if the fundamental relationship was between us and our material circumstances. Uh, but increasingly, our material circumstances mediate social relationships between us. Uh, and the fundamental relationships are between us and uh, other people. We looked at rich developed countries, uh, looking at the scale of income differences within each of them, the gap between rich and poor, and found that the more unequal societies with bigger gaps do worse on a whole range of health and social problems. Uh, almost all the problems which are worse at the bottom of the social ladder get worse in the whole society with greater inequality. So health is less good, both physical and mental health. Uh, there's more crime, more violence, more drug problems. Uh, more people in prison, um, more obesity, uh, so a, a, a vast raft of problems, actually including child well-being measures uh, and social cohesion. Reducing inequalities within our societies uh, is not only important in improving well-being in a whole range of different ways, but it's also a precondition for moving towards uh, sustainability. The main obstacle to sustainability, I think, is, is consumerism, but consumerism is, is driven by status competition, status insecurity, and those are intensified by greater inequality. You know, in more unequal societies, people um, work longer hours and they uh, save less of their income, they get into debt more, because money becomes more important in terms of how you show what you're worth. But greater equality is also important for moving towards sustainability because more equal societies are more cohesive, people trust each other more, community life is stronger. Uh, and that means that there's a stronger sense of, of the public good and the good of humanity, if you like. And there are surveys of um, business leaders' opinions, some of them international surveys, and one of the questions a particular survey has is a question about how important business leaders think environmental issues are. And it's, very, it's quite a strong relationship showing that in more equal societies, uh, business leaders think that uh, uh, environmental issues are more important. I think in more unequal societies, business people feel, well, our job is to fend for ourselves. I think in very poor societies, growth is important. Raising material standards matters. But in the rich developed world, having more and more of everything makes less and less difference. So there is no longer a relationship between uh, rising life expectancy and economic growth or any other measures of well-being and, and economic growth in the rich countries. I think that the fundamental obstacle and why people deny uh, global warming and won't recognize uh, the importance of rising CO2 levels is because it conflicts with uh, consumerist aspirations. Uh, the sense that your well-being depends on your income, uh, it's actually about relative income, about social position, and at a societal level, that is a zero-sum game. We can't all improve our social status. And it's really important to have the kind of research and understanding that, uh, to communicate that to the population, uh, but also uh, to reduce that sense that your well-being depends on stopping anything encroaching on your individual income. We have to reduce the inequality that drives um, uh, status competition and status insecurity.